Okay. Hey, somebody is, is Anand putting his hand in front of me? No, no, that is clouds. No, it's not clouds. Now the whole thing is cut off. No. Okay, forget. No okay. <laughs> he is doing his best. <clears throat> Okay, that's all you guys are live and then you can start speaking. Start. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, Welcome to this, uh, this, this, this live this broadcast of the Solar Eclipse, uh, which, which will start in, in a half, start in half an hour or so. so. Uh, uh, welcome everybody here. As you can see, there are a lot, lot of people here assembled to, to give you a live commentary on what is happening, as well as answer all your questions. First, I'd like to welcome Proceed Reddy, the Dean. Uh, and to kind of welcome all of us here, here and, 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 and tell you why we are here. Uh, uh, so yeah, good afternoon. Happy Deepavali, everyone. And also happy solar eclipse. Uh, there's no better way of celebrating both Deepavali and solar eclipse. And uh, Deepavali is the one which dispels the darkness, darkness in every sense. So I am very happy that uh, SCOPE team at IAA put together an excellent program and uh, even uh, live telecasting, this from Hanley as well as from Bangalore. And um, I, I am quite happy to see a lot of enthusiasm among uh, students uh, at IAA. They have put together not only just in English, but in all local languages in uh, India, um, and uh, of course, they are going to talk about some myths about, uh, you know, uh, surrounding the solar eclipse. And then um, there's a team which is, called, which is you know, uh, the myth buster of solar eclipse. I'm sure you're all going to enjoy this program. And then uh, welcome to the program. Thank you, Niras. Thank you, the team. Please go ahead. Thanks, thank you, sir. So, so welcome everybody again. again. Uh, 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 we, we have, have two live streams, streams on, on YouTube, YouTube now. One, one of them, them is in English and the other is in Kannada. The English one has feeds from Day and Hanley in Ladakh. Uh, the feed from Hanley in Ladakh is being arranged by Crispin Kartek, Doji Kamchuk, Stanton, Sevan and others. And the feed from Day itself in Ladakh is being arranged by Anand uh, and Sonam and Padma and others. The uh, uh, staff of work at the, the India Software, software Observatory, Observatory in Ladakh. In addition, we also have, have a Kannada stream. Uh, which, which is done in collaboration with the Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium in Bangalore and, and the Cosmos Project in Mysore. Uh, we also have that will have people from the planetarium, uh, from, from IAA, as well as, as astronomers in Mysore, uh, giving a live commentary, commentary about, about, about the eclipse and answering, and answering questions, uh, both, both in Canada. Uh, uh, we will now, this, this stream, stream of course is the one in English, and uh, we welcome everybody to the stream now. Uh, we, we will start, start, we will start uh, with uh, introducing people on the, the panel with us. Uh, I have my friend and colleague Ravita Banyan, uh, who's a faculty here at the English of Astrophysics in Bangalore. Uh, uh, we have Dr. Ramya Sitaram, uh, again from, from IA. Uh, she has a background in science as well as engineering, and she will answer a few questions about, about that as well. We also have Aratika Dev here, who's a student of IA. Uh, and and you can, you can put, put, up your, put, put on your camera, camera when you want. Uh, in addition, we also have a couple, couple of solar astronomers joining us later this evening to answer specific questions. Uh, we know that a lot of people, people on YouTube are very enthusiastic and you're talking to each other on chat, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I would also encourage you to post your questions about the eclipse uh, in the, the chat window. And if you can catch them in time, we will answer them throughout. This program will go on until 5.30 p.m. We right now have two streams from Ladakh, both, both of which are currently still uh, yet, yet to come up. Uh, uh, just wait for a few minutes. minutes. The Hanley will, will, will have its eclipse starting at 4.21. And Lay will have its eclipse starting at 4.17. Though so around 4 o'clock they should both come online. We will also bring in a feed from, from Russia and Kazakhstan soon, where the eclipse has already started. And you can then see how the eclipse progresses from Russia, Russia down, down to India, India and, 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 and south maybe of to Bangalore and Pune. And now I'll just ask Kavita Punya to maybe say a little, little bit about what are eclipses, how are they caused, and why is it some, why is something you're all fascinated about and you're all assembled here to uh, learn about. Okay, Th thank you, Neeraj. Uh, and good afternoon to everyone who have online, who have, have come to see the live stream of the 
solar eclipse. So in next couple of minutes, we are going to talk about what eclipses are and uh, how and when eclipse occurs, different type of eclipses and why eclipses are rare and some scientific importance of those eclipses. So eclipses are heavenly shadow plays, which we call it heavenly shadow plays because uh, it, it's happening at a much larger scale in sky, where planet Earth, its moon, and sun are involved, right? And shadow comes because there is a light source and there is an obstruction to it, and then the shadow falls on some other object. So in this case, sun is the light source and moon is the one which obstructs the sun and its shadow falls on earth. So for the eclipse to happen, sun, moon and earth has to be in straight line. So that is one basic requirement. And there are three types of eclipses that usually we observe. The first is the total solar eclipse. Uh, then partial solar eclipse and the annular solar eclipse. Now total solar eclipse occurs when moon comes in middle of the sun and the earth and completely blocks the face of the sun. So during the totality there is a considerable drop in the light level and for a couple of minutes it literally feels like a night. During that time you can also see a glow of corona which is basically the light that is that comes from the outer atmosphere of the uh, sun. And another thing, interesting thing that can happen during the total solar eclipse is that there is a drop in temperature. Ambient temperature drops literally by four to six degree. And uh, sudden dark nights that happens can also sometimes confuse the animals and the birds. So by far the total solar eclipse is the most amazing and awe-inspiring sight. But today we are not going to witness the total solar eclipse. Uh, total solar eclipse, by the way, are somewhat more rarer compared to the partial eclipse and the lunar, uh, I'm sorry, the annular eclipse. Now, the, during the partial solar eclipse, again, uh, Earth, Moon and Sun are in line, but per not in a perfect line. So, Moon only covers the disk of the sun partially. There is still a noticeable drop in the intensity of the sun depending on how much the uh, disk is covered. Now the third one is the annular solar uh, eclipse which happens when the angular diameter of the moon is slightly less than the angular diameter of the sun. Again uh, the sun, moon and earth has to be in straight line. And during annular solar eclipse, moon exactly sit in the middle of the sun. The, the, the outer edge of the sun remains uh, uncovered. And because of that, you also see a light coming from the outer edge, which forms a nice ring, which is also called the ring of fire. Now, to today's solar eclipse will be... Uh, it's a partial eclipse, first of all. It will be visible from many parts of India. Uh, however, the magnitude of this eclipse would vary depending on the exact location. So, um, the nearest should be continue on that or you want to... Yeah, thanks, 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 thanks Ravindra. Uh, so, as Ravindra explained, uh, solar eclipses are completely natural phenomenon. Uh, and they occur fairly regularly due to the motion of the moon around the earth and the moon and the earth around the sun. And we have known this for a very, very long time. Many cultures around the world have known the reason for the eclipses for many centuries and also have learned to predict them to various levels of accuracy. Now, of course, we know a lot more about eclipses and, and we use them for various scientific purposes, uh, which we'll come to in a bit. But for now, uh, I would like to start also, I'll tell you what. Who else is around Bangalore from IAA in this field? Uh, we also, we have uh, uh, we have staff at Crest Hosakote in Karnataka who are there to see the eclipse. We have our staff at Kodaikanal Solar Observatory, uh, which is hosting a public event for everybody in Kodaikanal to come. They have solar glasses for the public to come and see the eclipse with, and they're also transmitting our live stream on the auditorium. 
and they'll be answering questions live there as well. The planetarium, of course, is hosting the stream in Canada along with us and uh, Mysore. In Mysore, we are coordinating with uh, local organizations and we're having an event at the Arrival School uh, where there are eclipse classes provided for the students and teachers and the media will also be invited to come and, and, and stream from there. And of course, we have uh, uh, we have our Lay and Han Lay feed, uh, one of which you can see really, really beautifully on the screen. Uh, in addition, Kavalur Observatory is also trying to see the eclipse uh, with eclipse glasses for the staff as well as the local community. So now I would ask maybe Aritra, uh, uh, sorry, I, I'll ask Aratrika Day to tell us a little bit about what the students of IA have done in the last few days, which is to make uh, awareness videos of like one minute each in more than 12 Indian languages. So Aratrika, would you tell us a little bit about why you did this? What has the impact been and, 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 and so on? Okay, hi everyone. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure that uh, all of you have joined here today to experience this entire thing. And that students from, uh, from many parts of India actually experiencing and uh, being able to experience this thing. Uh, so uh, when the, the discussion first started, we decided that we would do a popular like uh, um, uh, science explanation video like uh, to give a sort of background about what solar eclipses are and how they're natural phenomena uh, and uh, no one needs to be worried about it, needs to be scared about it. And for that reason, we also explore a lot of myths uh, surrounding these eclipses that are that are present in our everyday uh, conversations, in our everyday practices, and the sort of things that we grow up with and sometimes don't even care to actually uh, question. So uh, we sort of uh, went through a lot of myths. We asked people what sort of myths we have grown up with. Uh, that happened within IA. Of course, among the students, we had this conversation, and many of them also spoke with their family members to sort of get an idea of what sort of myths people have to uh, are sort of. Um, uh, sort of exposed to from their very like early childhood, and we came up with a list of such myths, and we did uh, this myth busting videos in all these languages, and we think it uh, created quite a good uh, impact among the students because also to some students who are actually pursuing science came up came up to sort of came back with the with the with the opinion that many of their previous false ideas got busted through this got bust through these videos. Apart from that, we also did a video on the like a short uh, position on what exactly is going to happen today, what the situation would be in Bangalore, and uh, from which parts of India or the world the things would be visible the most. That sort of things we also did. So, so it was a very collaborative process in the sense that almost 20 students were involved in the entire thing. <clears throat> in uh, as as Neil said, we have uh, we have uh, we have these videos in 13 languages in total. So yeah, I think it was a huge, like a huge effort that was, uh, of course, uh, led to like a, a good impact, and uh, it was uh, fruitful to say the very least. And we hope to continue this sort of effort from the IAA student side in the future as well. Thank you. Thanks, thank, thank you, Arthika. Indeed, indeed, a very nice initiative, and uh, these videos are put up on Instagram. Twitter and YouTube, so we encourage you to go take a look. One of the three videos is about this particular eclipse, but the other two are general, of course, and apply to all eclipses. With that, maybe we would tell you a little bit about this particular eclipse, Ravinder. Uh, so, so this particular eclipse, of course, is not a total eclipse. This is a partial eclipse all over the world, uh, which happens sometimes when the umbra is outside the North Pole, right? And therefore, only the penumbra is visible on the Earth's surface. Uh, the maximum coverage is around Russia and Kazakhstan, around 80% or so. And by the time it comes to India, uh, the maximum coverage in Ladakh and Jammu Kashmir is only 55%. But then it, it comes down to even, even less. Uh, in Bangalore, it's 10% and in Trivandrum, it's around 2%. And that's why we are having feeds from Ladakh, which, uh, as you can see, are experiencing some technical problems, but they'll be online, hopefully, by the time the eclipse starts. Uh, and... Uh, and, and therefore, the part, total totality of the eclipse will be visible outside the Earth. If you are in a spacecraft or a satellite outside the Earth, uh, north of our pole, then you might see the totality for this eclipse. Uh, Banyal, did you want to add something about this particular eclipse and what you would see as an eclipse starts? Okay, so as we said, this is going to be a partial solar eclipse. And the partiality would vary roughly from 40% in um, extreme north 
Leh Ladakh region. And as you move to the south, this would fall. In Bangalore, it's going to be, for example, around 10%, right? And so, so 10% at 10% level, the you may not be able to see the noticeable dip in the intensity, but at least in Bangalore today, the sky is very clear. And if you have these solar goggles, uh, you should definitely step out and try to see. You should be able to see a part of solar disk being uh, blocked by the uh, sun. Uh, we, we are still waiting for the feed from Hanley and Lay. Very shortly, it should be uh, coming um, online. And we will continue to tell you more about the eclipses, how they happen, and uh, what are the myths and superstitions surrounding the eclipse. And also some interesting facts about the um, eclipses. So uh, should we need to continue with those or? Yes. Uh, yes, thanks so, a lot. Thanks a lot, Panyal. Yeah. So Panyal had mentioned that eclipse glasses are needed. So they look like this, right? And and you can you could have gotten them in the various planetaria or science centers. And if you wear them, you look like this. Okay. Uh, if you look at any any light or any bulb through this, you will not see anything at all because it absorbs light to a very very large extent, especially ultraviolet. Uh, therefore, this is meant only for looking at the sun. And sun is pretty much the only object you can see through these lenses. But of course, not everybody would have eclipse glasses at home or be able to acquire one. If the eclipse was total and it occurred when the sun was high up in the horizon, then there are very, very nice ways of seeing it safely uh, without any e technical equipment. Unfortunately, this eclipse is going to be visible only in the western horizon. It, it is setting in India during maximum eclipse. And therefore, unless you have an unrestricted, unrestricted view of the western horizon, you will not be able to see the eclipse really well. And the problem, of course, is that uh, during, no, at, a, at a horizon, we usually have some haze or clouds and so on. And therefore, this is not a great eclipse to see from all parts of India. And that's why we are hoping that the live feed from Ladakh would, would help uh, in this regard. But there are ways of seeing the eclipse safely from home. Uh, one of them, of course, is to use something which is in your kitchen, uh, which is a strainer or a spoon. Would you like to tell us a bit about uh, how do you see with a spoon? With the, oh. holes, with the holes in them, or a strainer or a pinhole camera. I see. Okay, so maybe the pinhole camera camera is the one of the easiest way to see the eclipse. Uh, remember, don't look at the sun directly because it might be harmful. So whether it's a total solar eclipse or partial or annular eclipse, looking at the sun directly is not advised in any of these situations. So there are ways how we can. Um, still view the eclipse. So one one method is to use a pinhole camera. So pinhole camera is basically creating a small pinhole in a cardboard and uh, pointing that towards the sun and letting the light go through the pinhole and project it onto the wall. Now the, you would see the image of the sun being formed on the wall and in that image if the eclipse is happening, you would be able to see the shadow of the moon coming into it. So, uh, Neeraj, how does this spoon thing works? I'm not very you know, well aware of that. The uh, spoon part. Yeah, so you might have a, the kind of spoon in your kitchen which you use to fry papad or, or, or aplam or whatever you call it, right? It will be a spoon like this with, with holes and each hole will be around 2, 3, 4 millimeter wide. Right? Now, if you hold it against the sun and, and look at the, sun, the image of the sun through the holes on the wall or the floor, and if it's far enough away, you'll get the image of the sun and not of the hole. Right? And therefore, when the sun starts getting eclipsed, each of the small images of the sun formed behind the spoon or a colander or a strainer will then show you the eclipse sun. And and so and if it and it looks very very pretty, you can you can make very make a very pretty patterns with them and so on. We will try and get a spoon from the kitchen now and show you what we mean. Uh, the other way to do, it, of course, the pinhole camera, which I think most most students have made in their schools, 
and that's another way to see it as well. Uh, so, maybe can I ask Vagish? I see Vagish Mishra is here. Vagish Mishra is a faculty at our institute and is a solar astronomer. Uh, we talked about why we need eclipse glasses and uh, we need to absorb ultraviolet from the sun. Uh, can I ask Vagish to say a little bit about why do we bother about ultraviolet from the sun at all? Uh, you can put your camera on, please. Yeah, hello. Yeah, so from the sun, there are very harmful radiation, as Niruj pointed out, like ultraviolet reaching to the earth. And uh, this radiation actually can damage our eye pupil because these are very intense radiation. So it is not like advisable as Ravinder also actually made it very clear that never look at the sun directly, even during partial eclipse or total solar eclipse. And of course not on sun, even when there is no eclipse at all. Yeah. I think Niruj is muted. Oh, thank you. So we all know that uh, the sun emits visible light, and that's why we get heat and light, which 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 uh, is in, is in important for life on Earth. Uh, but but then we talk about ultraviolet. The sun emit light of all other wave bands. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So actually, sun radiates uh, from X-ray to gamma rays and uh, this uh, white light, infrared radio but we know that most of the harmful radiation is of course absorbed by the earth's atmosphere but there are some wavelength band even in ultraviolet that reaches on the surface and that's we actually we know that then that can cause sunburn and many other skin disease that radiation even when reaches to eye pupil then it can damage so there are some specific wavelengths that are very very harmful for our eyes which are very sensitive to that wavelength and of course, other wavelengths by which we survive on the earth and are very important for plants and other lives are there. But uh, there are some narrow wavelengths that is very harmful. Yeah, so I just want to add that uh, it's not just the UV waves which are harmful to the eyes. See, eye is a very sensitive tissue of uh, human body and any exposure, to excessive exposure to photons, be it in... Uh, yeah. visible or in UV, it's going to cause a damage, right? So it's it's not just UV alone, but the visible light too can harm because the amount of photons that we receive from sun is, is, is really very, very huge. So that's why one has to be a little mindful about viewing the sun directly. Well, not to view at all directly. And there are no other harmful effects. You can go out, there's, not, there's no special radiations that sun emit during the eclipse. It's all the time emitting whatever it is emitting, right? Sometimes you get these fake news from uh, social media that during the eclipse, these things happen. No, they don't happen during the eclipse. They are happening all the time. Sun is shining for bi billions of years. It's going to shine for some more billions of years and it's going to emit all these radiations. So, so it's not things are not just happening at specifically during the eclipse that you want, uh, one must remember. During eclipse, yes, you can walk out, you can travel, you can eat food, and do any other activities. There are there are no um, risk or danger associated with it, as often it is uh, being circulated sometime in media, sometime in the form of fake news, sometime a baba or somebody advising people not to uh, go out and watch. Remember, eclipses are beautiful, heavenly phenomena, and one must just go out and enjoy them. Thanks, th thanks, Bania. Uh, I just want to point out that in one minute, the eclipse will start in Leh, and uh, it will start in from Hanle in four minutes. So I request I request the control center to put in just the lay and the Hanley feed on YouTube. Uh, and and uh, the lay feed will show you the eclipse starting in a minute. So I request uh, the control center to put the lay feed up. There are a few comments saying they don't want to see our faces. So we are putting the eclipse up zoomed in for you.
Yeah, thanks, uh, the IA Eclipse control room, which is which has Swastik and Amit Gautam here at the back end, uh, getting all our stream from all over India together into one place for your for your enjoyment. Uh, we now have the feeds from Hanley and Lay on, on the screen. The big black things you see are clouds, unfortunately, and we will have to live with them. Now, if you look at the Lay feed, you can see the eclipse already, I think. Uh, if you think you can see the eclipse starting, you can put on chat uh, what, which direction you think it's starting from. Which direction do you think it's starting from? In the lay field. It's getting obvious. Yeah. 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 Look at the top right corner of the feed from the You can already see the moon shadow on the sun. The shadow of the moon is moving across the sun in the And in four minutes, it will start moving across the sun's disk as seen from Han Lake. For it to be seen from Frank it's going to take half an hour. Now, I would like to hear in Ramya. Uh, we will we will keep, keep our, our, keep keep our, our uh, videos. videos also. We love it. Ramya, you want to tell, tell us a little bit about any previous eclipses you have seen? Right, right. And, 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 and what does the say about eclipses in terms of research? What, what, what is this? What has been the history of uh, my research during my life? Um, hello, um, Neeraj. Thank you for, for IA uh, for arranging this. I think this is an excellent show. Um, Adjust it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ravinder, if you can mute yourself, please. Yeah. So um, uh, on the left here, what you can see is the lay image. Of, uh, taken from lay image of the sun taken from lay and you can see on the right uh, on the right side uh, the eclipse has already started so the fast moving things i just want to mention as neeraj mentioned the fast moving things are clouds so uh, don't think that uh, that is the uh, uh, moon so uh, it is the fast moving things will be clouds so we hope we don't get clouds right now and we'll uh, Enjoy the show completely. So yeah, uh, uh, Niruj, if you can repeat your question, actually there was an echo going on, so I couldn't hear your question. Yeah, I wanted to ask you uh, what has been the history of eclipse studies in IAA historically? How have eclipses been important in understanding uh, about understanding the sun? Actually, um, yeah, if you can hear me, so I. Uh, the eclipse study is, during the eclipse, we have studied uh, the sun from quite a long time. So here in Kodakanol, um, or even before when it was Madras Observatory, uh, it was uh, during the eclipse that in uh, IAA, IAA of course was not yet formed, it was not named as Indian Institute of Astrophysics, it was named as Madras Observatory. Uh, I think... Uh, we were able to detect the helium during the eclipse itself. So um, the presence of uh, helium element in the sun was detected during the solar eclipse. I think that is one of the major contributions of uh, uh, or the legacy of Indian Institute of uh, Astrophysics uh, when it was called as the Madras Observatory. So uh, yeah, that is one of the major uh, uh, studies which was done here at uh, uh, Madras Observatory. Thanks, Ramya. Yes, indeed. Uh, for many of you who may not know, the element helium is named after the sun. Helios means sun in Greek. And helium was discovered in the spectrum of the eclipse sun from India in 1868 during a total solar eclipse on 18th August. Uh, Norman Poxon, who was the director of the Madras Observatory at that time, was in Machilipatam, and uh, Pierre Janssen, from France was in Guntur, both in Andhra Pradesh, and it was them who discovered the new spectral line in uh, uh, during the during the eclipse, which they then which Poxon then attributed to a new element called helium. 
and therefore eclipse not only is that is that an important discovery from a solar eclipse it also has a very very interesting uh, indian connection and of course we all know about the other very very important discovery uh, made during eclipse which is that of uh, uh, confirming einstein's general theory of relativity in 1919 by arthur eddington when he discovered that the that the light from the stars behind the sun were indeed gra gravitational lens the way his uh, way einstein's theory uh, predicted uh wagish can i ask you to tell us a little bit about uh, what would you see if this eclipse was total and uh, why would a corona be important to study okay yeah so <clears throat> actually the history of eclipse goes back to many thousands of year in fact uh, there are many hist uh, historical texts in india uh, which have already explained about the um, total solar eclipse in fact the oldest document to in, in india actually rigveda have also taught about uh, means uh, how total solar eclipse can happen but of course in a form of a uh, story more scientific uh, phenomena this like it is observed like a more scientific phenomena in the very uh, after actually in in the time of aryabhat if we read um, his books there there is a discussion of how transit of moon between the earth and sun can actually caused total solar eclipse and this phenomena has been very important for solar astronomers because they try to look at the corona outer atmosphere of the sun which is actually billions times fainter than our earth atmosphere so it cannot be actually seen if uh, there is no occultation of the disk of the sun and this astronomical phenomena allow us to observe the faint corona at the time of total solar eclipse and then we can study how the what are the dynamics of the outer solar atmosphere so in this way we have some understanding how the energy from the deep interior of the sun can propagate and even perturb the outer atmosphere of the sun and such total solar eclipses have allowed us many parts of the world people have taken tour to observe total solar eclipses and they have derived scientific conclusion about the outer atmosphere of the sun and the phenomena happening there Thanks, Vagish. Now I think all of us can see that the eclipse has started in Hanle as well. Uh, Leh, of course, is the capital of Ladakh. Hanle is around six hours drive from Leh in Ladakh, where we have have our Indian Astronomical Observatory. Uh, can I ask the control center to uh, put my video on? Uh, I have in front of me uh, a, a, a spoon. Uh, which is what you use in your kitchen for frying stuff right and the, the holes in the spoon is what i mean so if you hold such a spoon against the sun and look at the image through the holes on the floor or the wall you will start seeing the eclipse sun when the eclipse is visible for your image this is a very very easy pinhole camera so it is for you to uh, can you for uh, because that the key candle later Just repeat once quickly. Yeah. Uh, so this is what I mean. This is the spoon I think all of us have in our kitchens, and the holes we have here are a few millimeters uh, big. So if you hold it against the sun and look at the look at the image on the wall, you once the eclipse starts for your location, you can start seeing small images of the eclipse sun yourself. And this is like a very very safe. very very easy well free method of seeing the eclipse we also have a lot of comments uh, about uh, whether we can eat during an eclipse or we can go out during an eclipse and the answer of course is yes uh, we you can do whatever you want to do with the eclipse except looking at the sun directly with the naked eye or through a telescope feel free to eat and drink and go outside and play and look at the telescope look at look, look at the eclipse through uh, eclipse glasses safely and enjoy it uh, the the few questions here which i just run through very quickly <clears throat> yes the io io hanle iao hanle is run by us the it, iao stands for indian astronomical observatory it's at a height of 4500 meters in hanle it hosts two optical telescopes the himalayan chandra telescope which is 2 meters wide Uh, the growth 0.7 meter telescope 
And in the base camp, we have uh, two Cherenko uh, telescopes to observe gamma rays indirectly. One is called Hagar, which we operate with the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And the other is called MACE, which is the second largest Cherenko telescope in the world, which is uh, operated by BART at our, at, our, at our observatory. We also have observatories in Kavalo, in Tamil Nadu, which is near Vaniambadi or Vellore. We have a radio observatory in Goribidunur. We have... Uh, Iruj, I am uh, Yabi speaking here. Yes. And a huge crowd of people are waiting in Kodekanal to watch the solar eclipse. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Eddie. We have the Kodekanal Solar Observatory, which is more than 100 years old, uh, which is where AB is speaking from now. We have also an uh, uh, engineering facility, a state-of-the-art facility in Hoskote, outside Bangalore. And of course, we have Ladakh. Uh, can I ask... Uh, AB to uh, turn his camera on. Just show us the crowd uh, there. Uh, uh, so if you can, if you can put AB's uh, camera, which is I think called display. Niruj, we are waiting here and we are watching your display. Can, uh, would you be able to show the cloud? is very cloudy. As we already predicted, Kodakanal is cloudy. We cannot see it. And uh, uh, morning, we have taken some pictures. Every uh, would you be able to show the historical the six -inch and auditorium. We have taken it. Okay. Maybe you, I could request every from Kodakanal Solar Observatory to send us the picture they took of the sun with your telescope on WhatsApp, and we will show it to you now. Okay, I will send it to you. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll go back to the eclipse. As you can see, there are a lot of clouds in, in Leh, but the Hanley side yes. seems to be very, very clear. And you can see the moon eating into the eclipse. Why can't we see the on a bigger display this thing where IAA eclipse control room is there? Uh, we're trying to show both Leh and Hanley at the same time because the clouds in Leh keep coming and going. Yes. Sir. On YouTube, you can see just the Leh and Han Leh field. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I would like to get Aratrika in uh, and uh, Ramya, if you can, and uh, tell us a little bit about about this whole eclipse eating campaign we are running. Hi. You can see people around. Mars <laughs> 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 Aratrika, can you, can can you audible? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Uh, so uh, uh, there's this popular, uh, I mean, <laughs> like very publicist, publicist news that, and we are also seeing it in the chat box very frequently. That in the YouTube chat box that people are not supposed to eat during eclipse, or maybe there's another another uh, thing widely believed is that uh, people are not supposed to cook also during eclipse, and if you have any leftover food from from maybe from some time before the eclipse, you are supposed to put the holy basil leaves into it and sort of preserve it. That sort of all these different types of myths, of all sort of varieties are practiced almost ubiquitously all across India. So we, we again emphasize that uh, there is no restriction in eating or cooking food during eclipse. Eclipse is a completely natural phenomenon that does not in any way affect the food. Uh, when you have it or cook it during uh, during the I mean uh, while the eclipse is going on, so feel free to uh, eat and also share your selfies with us. Take a selfie with the uh, image of the eclipsing sun in the background with uh, with you eating food and share it with share it with us share it with us on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or <clears throat> uh, any place you feel like with the hashtag eclipse eating. Uh, we can also find out about it in, our, in the reels that we share uh, uh, in the in the uh, in the process uh, leading to this eclipse uh, uh, on our Instagram and Twitter and YouTube pages. 
so yeah eclipse eating and happy eating during the eclipse thanks thank you thank you arthika uh, can i ask crispin to turn his uh, video on but not his mic and i'm, I'm uh, showing that i'm drinking juice so this is my hashtag eclipse eating okay there is a question from chirag chawla it says why can't we look at the sun directly during an eclipse but uh, we can do so on normal days that is not true please do not look at the sun directly at any time uh, through naked eyes through binoculars through a lens through a telescope anything at all uh, it's 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 very very dangerous for your eyes to look at the sun directly during an eclipse or during normal times uh, so there's somebody else who said that he has polaroid glasses with uv protection uh, it may not be safe to use because the the required amount of uv needs to be cut cut out and therefore eclipse glasses are calibrated and they and we they guarantee to cut out the required amount of ultraviolet and, and and visible therefore we would recommend that you only use eclipse glasses to look at the sun directly during the eclipse uh, another question says if sun emits radiation always why is it said that is more harmful during a solar eclipse banyal do you want to answer that yes <clears throat> sun emits the radiation all the time and uh, so if you look directly it's going to damage your eyes no matter whether it is eclipse or not now during eclipse what happens is especially when it is a total solar eclipse when the sun's disk is completely blocked by the moon uh, it's literally close to dark and when we are looking directly if at all we shouldn't do that but if somebody is looking directly at the sun so what happens is in the darkness the pupil dilates it becomes bigger and suddenly when the moon moves slightly there is a sudden light so sudden gush of light and i cannot adjust immediately so that can be little bit more harmful because i pupil is wide open and your your eyes are exposed to a lot of photons so that in that sense it can be little bit more uh, harmful or dangerous if you if you are not careful so no way you should look directly at the sun whether it is total solar eclipse or partial solar eclipse thank thank you banyar i see that uh, vagish mishra is with us uh, we looking at the sun now during an eclipse and that's fascinating now an eclipse is one of the most beautiful sights you can see in the sky uh, but the sun is also an object of study for astronomers for various reasons right and we've been looking at the sun from the earth of course from kodaikanal and other places for many many decades in india but then we're going to do something very very interesting next year we are going to be launching a, a space mission uh, to the l1 position in our orbit which is meant to just look at the sun right it's called aditya and it's going to be india's first <coughs> solar space mission so vakish do you want to tell us why that's something all of you are very excited by yeah so actually uh, as you pointed out that uh, india has planned a mission called aditya l1 which will be which is actually being designed and developed by indian space research organization and of course with participation with other research institution and this mission will be soon inserted in the coming few months in the halo orbit around the l1 point between the sun and earth and this mission is uh, actually being planned to study the solar atmosphere there is something called solar magnetic storms and its impact on the environment around the earth actually sun also ejects lot of plasma huge plasma that actually comes in the heliosphere around the in the distance between the sun and earth and that can once reach to the earth it can disturb the earth's magnetic field and therefore the, the such disturbances to earth's magnetic field can lead to lot of perturbation it can lead to space weather events that can lead to gps 
failure, error in our navigation, communication, and it can cause complete blackouts. There are some events in the history where solar storms have led to very much billions of dollars of loss in different countries. So therefore, India has planned this mission to understand the sun as a star in a very detailed way. And once we understand the sun, we are more closer to understand the cosmos, which is full of stars. So it is the first step to understand the star in depth. And this uh, mission actually will study several things like coronal heating, solar wind acceleration, and uh, it will continuously observe the photosphere, chromosphere, different actually atmosphere of the sun. So we can say that India had planned the first dedicated Indian mission to observe the sun. It will be probably launched in the coming February or March by this PSLV uh, launch vehicle. Yeah. Thanks, Bagish. As you can see, it's extremely cloudy in Leh, but thankfully, Hanle is it's completely clear. And we're we having a wonderful view of the solar eclipse from Hanle. Uh, and thanks for the control center for you know, zooming in when required to the correct stream. Uh, you can see that a good fraction of the sun is already eclipsed. Uh, the, it, around half the sun will be eclipsed just before sunset. And we are very, very happy that all of you are able to join us. I see that YouTube has more than 4,500 people and we welcome all of you and very happy that you are here with us. Uh, there was a question as to why each of these streams uh, show the moon's shadow at different directions. And that's an excellent question. Uh, that is because the latitudes are different for each location. And as you move in latitude, the direction or in which the moon will eat into the sun will change. There have been many, many questions repeatedly about can we eat, can we drink, and so on. And that just to repeat, yes, you can eat during an eclipse. Yes, you can drink during an eclipse. Yes, you can go out during an eclipse. You can do all of that. Uh, I would now invite uh, more questions on YouTube chat on the eclipse and about the sun. And we will take them as you post them. Uh, yeah, we just give you a couple of minutes to type in more questions and then we'll take them. Yeah, there's a question from Jayant Malse, uh, which says, which says he's asking, how do the rays of the sun deflect differently during the eclipse? Do they give out different rays after hitting the moon's surface? Banyal, do you want to respond to this since you mentioned this briefly before? So question is, how do the rays deflect, get deflected from the sun? Uh, sorry, from the moon. During uh, eclipse. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. So during the eclipse, it's not that moon is deflecting in a special way. It's always, uh, when, when you see moon in the sky, not during the eclipse, but otherwise, the moon reflects some of the sunlight that falls on it. So during eclipse, actually it is not going to reflect because it's the darker side of the moon which is towards us. So if at all any uh, light which comes to us, it would be only close to the edge of the moon, uh, slightly reflected from the uh, edges and so on. But there is no special way that the rays are getting deflected to Earth because it's an eclipse. So that doesn't uh, really happen. Um, that's that's correct, right? Yes, thank, yes thanks, Ahmad Bhaiya. Uh, we're very happy to have the director of our institute join us, Professor Arnapurni Subramaniam. Uh, I would like her to you know, introduce herself to everybody and also answer this question we just got saying, why do we not get an eclipse uh, every new moon or full moon? Yeah, so uh, hello everyone and uh, uh, happy to uh, join us uh, online uh, uh, to view this wonderful uh, event, nature's uh, basically magic, basically it's nature's magic to tell us how an eclipse can happen and today is a uh, uh, solar eclipse. The question is, today is basically like a, a new moon day where we, can, we have the solar eclipse happening, but we do not have the eclipse happening on every new moon day. The question is, why do we have it on only on certain new moon days? So I can um, uh, basically give you with respect to a very, very simple explanation using my bangles. Can you add it? Yeah. So the bangles is like if you have an orbit which is like this, and you also have a, 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 a moon going around the Earth. 
in uh, same orbit, then it is aligned. So every point, every time it comes between uh, the sun and us, then it will be blocked. But actually the orbit is slightly misaligned. So I'm just exaggerating. So it is basically like, you know, it is misaligned by 5 degrees. So if you have a misaligned, uh, I'm not able to hold it here. So if I, it is misaligned by 5 degrees, what happens is it cannot come in the same line of sight. So only when the line of sight matches, that is when the opposite ends, 1 and 2. 1 and 2 diametrically opposite ends where the, the earth and the moon come line of sight in the sun. So because of this orbit, only you would have guessed by now, two times a year this alignment works. And because of this, the uh, eclipse, you can predict the next one. Now, can someone write when will be the next possible eclipse if it is happening in October? When can it be? It can be in next one year or next six months. It's up to you. Thank you. Uh, since, no, since we are very happy to have the director here, do you also want to tell us a little bit about uh, how, how the history of IAA is linked with eclipses? What? We have been having expeditions to study the total info like for many, many decades, yeah. right? So, so uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and, and, and here's some biscuits for you to eat oh, thank you, thank during you. the eclipse. Hey, during the eclipse, right? Yeah, I would like to have some water, but hey, yeah, the, yeah, the biscuit is fine. So I just had my coffee, so it has got uh, nothing to do with it. You can eat just this, that I'm blocking the uh, something, the, let's say I'm blocking the painting behind me, right? It's just what's happening. The painting has got nothing to do. Painting doesn't even know it is getting blocked. It's just your viewpoint. I'm blocking the painting. It's just a line of sight projection. So just because the moon comes between us and the sun does not mean that anything is right. odd is happening. So you can definitely eat and do go on, go on with your life. Except you should not look at the sun. That's the only uh, precaution you should do. That's all. Nothing else. Why? Because there is an excess light and then the eye. It's like, you know, you go into a dark room and suddenly switch on a flood light. Eyes will get really, uh, I mean, your uh, eyes correcting a lot of light and suddenly a lot of light enters in. So that is the only reason, nothing else. It's not that no, anything is imaging more. But I has a long trick. Why do you want to study eclipse? Because that's the time when you see the corona of the sun and that is very, very faint. It's like looking at a... Uh, um, uh, what do you call the uh, flickering small insects in front of a floodlight. So you have to study it when to block the sunlight of the disk. Now that is when you have to study the corona and you cannot do it artificially. So you go towards places where you can have total solar eclipse and set up experiments. IA has more than um, 120 years of studying the sun. The, the, the heritage of IA is studying the sun for more than 120 years. So uh, we study not only the sun's phenomena, the variability, the sun, the why it is throwing out material like lunar mass ejections, etc., and the magnetic fields. And since we are living with a star, we should know the star and then you know when it is same for us and the same for the living organisms, etc. So understanding the corona of the sun and how the matter is ejected is also very important. That is what is studied in eclipse. And uh, um, I think we are will be launching the mission to study the sun uh, in particular that is called the Aditya L1 mission. And the in institute is actually uh, a built uh, instrument which can actually permanently uh, block the light. That means a permanent eclipse so that you can always see the corona and you can always see if a matter is ejected from the sun and goes into the corona, you can actually track it. So, that is called the emission line coronagraph, and that is what the institute has built. And that will be launched soon in the mission, which is going to be placed to the Elven Point. So if you're interested, a lot more to read up, understanding the sun, understanding what is the Lagrange point, etc., etc. And we'll, we'll come more with the details of this mission and what we plan to study in another episode. Yeah. So as soon as they've seen you come online, there have been a lot of questions about career options in IAA. Oh, I so see. I request okay. you and the Dean Ishwar to kind of say briefly what are the opportunities for people with an engineering degree and with a science degree. Yeah, so I can just uh, talk about uh, a few things. One is uh, you need instruments to pick pictures and you need, in, like the mission, um, you, I think someone has just written about James Webb's telescope, right? So it's producing excellent pictures. now. To get the telescope built, 
you have this mirror as polished, coated, all this engineering components in place and the fault unfolding, folding, etc. And then you put it on a mission and send it. You need a huge number of people working on it. And the team includes large number of engineers, large number of planners. You need managers. You need even, you know, lawyers because, you know, it is a, a, a collaboration between various space agencies like the NASA, the, the, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. You need to have agreements written down, etc., etc. So career options are uh, wide and uh, uh, definitely if you want to do law and the law is used to promote science uh, between various countries, it's, it's really nice. So actually uh, the job opportunities are like, you know, we run several observatories. We run um, ground telescopes. We also have a space telescope, one in orbit. Now, next one will go soon. We have a team of scientists who do science. We also have a good number of engineers who not only build instruments, but also support the operations and maintenance and working of these telescopes. These telescopes are working and producing pictures because of large number of expert engineering team involved. What kind of engineering? Optical engineering, electronics, communication, computer. So all sorts of engineering are involved there. And in IA, we do have a team like this. And of course, uh, communication, science communication, documentation, everything, library, all this uh, support uh, uh, are uh, part of any organization for that matter. So I hope I answered this question. So uh, mega projects, that's another place where India is, uh, India has a lot of uh, uh, collaborations, international collaborations. They also have a lot of engineers, etc. Maybe Ishwar can say, say a few words on that. Thanks, thank you. Uh, Ishwar, would you like to add something to it? Ishwar, if you're there, would you like to add something to that? Okay, uh, we'll get the, him. Yeah, you can see the lake clearing, I guess. Yeah, it's, right? beautiful. it's beautiful. So then let's go to a few more questions. We have some very interesting questions since then. There's a question which says, why can't the shadow of Mercury and Venus fall on Earth? I think that's an excellent question. The answer is yes, it does. And I'll ask Banyal to say something about that. Okay, to understand how... Uh, the, the shadow that we fall on Earth because of the uh, solar eclipse, then moon comes in between the sun and Earth. So remember, moon is 400 times smaller than sun, but sun is about 400 times away from moon. So when we look at both bodies in the sky, both objects in the sky, their size look almost same. Their apparent or angular size is almost same, right? Which means that during the eclipse, the moon can block the entire disk of the sun. So as a result, the complete, that's what, that's when we get the complete uh, darkness. Now, when we take uh, Mercury or Venus, yes, they can also pass uh, in front of the solar disk, but they are at a vast distance from Earth. So their angular size from the Earth is very, very tiny. And as a result, the shadow, so-called shadow caused by them, um, or as seen from the Earth, would be very, very small. But it's the fact that, yes, Venus and Mercury transit also happen. Uh, transit is nothing but eclipse, just happening at a very, very small scale. Small scale because the angular size of the Venus and the Mercury, as seen from Earth, are very small, let us say, compared to the Moon. So another thing is that, uh, again, the Earth and rest of the planets are revolving sun uh, in, an or in, in their respective orbits. And these orbits are not all in one plane. They are not exactly in one plane. Each of the uh, planets uh, have a tilt, the orbital tilt of each planet with respect to the other planets. So it's for the same reason that we do not see the transit of Venus or transit of Mercury every year, but only when there are uh, the configurations are uh, appropriate and suitable. For the same reason that we see the transit, uh, we see the uh, eclipse, solar eclipse rarely because it's only on certain occasions that uh, moon, the orbit of the moon and the 
uh, Earth around the Sun, orbit of the Moon around the Earth, and orbit of the Earth around the Sun, uh, they they happen to align only uh, rarely. So, total solar eclipses are on an average observed probably uh, once in 18 months somewhere on Earth. So that's why they are rare. Whereas the partial eclipses are much more common. They not they may not occur at one place all the time, but at somewhere or other on Earth, you would definitely see them more frequently, the partial eclipse. Uh, Thank you, Banya. So the next partial solar eclipse that will be seen in India is on 2nd August 2027, so it's quite a few years to come. And that will be seen across South India. The next total solar eclipse will be seen on 20th March 2034, and the path of totality will cross Punjab, Himachal, Haryana, and so on. So, you know, you can mark your calendars right now if you wish, and we'll see you there, of course. A couple of questions which are come in which I want to take. There's a very interesting question which says, if we are on the moon, shall we also have an eclipse because of Earth's shadow? Uh, by Koka Vijay. I think it's a wonderful question. Uh, yes, and, and, and so if our shadow falls on the moon, uh, we experience it as a lunar eclipse, right? Where the moon, moon gets covered by the Earth's shadow. If you're on the moon at that time, you would experience it as a solar eclipse. And I think that, and so any, 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 if you're on any object in the solar system, you'll have some eclipse. That is beautiful. For example, uh, there's a wonderful video online uh, taken from the Perseverance rover on Mars, where they have seen, uh, I think, Deimos, the moon of Mars, eclipse the sun, right? And, and, and so now we started seeing eclipses from other planets in the solar system, which is, which is, I think, very, very beautiful. There's also been a wonderful set of images of uh, the total solar eclipse shadow on the Earth's surface as taken from the International Space Station. I, I would encourage you all to Google it. There is beautiful, uh, amazing, amazing images. Now, I think, thankfully, the clouds are parted in Leh. So now we have beautiful images from Leh and Hanle of an eclipse sun. And you can see uh, that uh, it's, it's nearing around 55%, which is the maximum. And at 5.12, the eclipse will be seen in Bangalore, at which point we will try and relay a, a, a live feed from Bangalore from the terrace here as well. I see that Piali Chatterjee has joined us. Piali Chatterjee is a faculty at our institute and she is also a solar astronomer. Uh, so we had Vagish Mishra tell us a little bit about the sun and the corona and, and, why, it's and why it's important that we're launching Aditya. Uh, I'll ask Piali to come in and say a little bit about what are the other interesting things about the sun which, which people might not know and how we can maybe connect that with things around us in our houses or something in our laboratory. Piali, please. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Piali, please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, Neeroj, can you please repeat the question for me? Uh, I, uh, Piali, if you could tell us a little bit about what are the other really, really intriguing and surprising things about the sun. Uh, including, you know, things which might have relevance to paint and things like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, hello everyone who has uh, joined us today on this uh, live uh, uh, program from IAA, which is being curated by Neeroj. Uh, so, um, I uh, work mainly on the solar atmosphere as well as the uh, interior magnetic fields of the sun. So one of the uh, in, uh, interesting uh, problems is the sunspot cycle. As you know that sunspots appear and disappear on the uh, surface of the sun with a periodicity of 11 years. So one of the challenging uh, problems in uh, solar physics is to uh, reproduce this phenomena using uh, mathematical and numerical models. And we uh, have been successful or the community has been successful to some extent, but I would say there are a lot more things to be done in this, uh, in this area, uh, especially to explain uh, the irregularities. I mean, irregularities in the sunspot cycle. So for example, why one sunspot cycle is stronger than the other and so on and so forth. Now, if you come out from the uh, atmosphere into the atmosphere of the sun, you know that sun has different layers, like just uh, layers of an onion, for example. And so you have a core, a radiative zone, a convection zone, and then you have a photosphere, and then a chromosphere, transition region, corona. So there, these are all technical terms. 
but these are all different layers of the solar atmosphere so uh, another yet another grand challenge problems in solar physics or in stellar physics rather is to uh, find out why the corona of a sun or a star is much more hotter hotter than the uh, than the surface of the star itself so for example in the sun the surface temperature is about uh, 5800 degree centigrade but as you go up into the corona away from the source of the heat and light the temperature actually increases to a million degrees now the community does not have any definite answer to why such a thing happens there are of course theories so some sorry about the background noise uh, yeah i am actually on a highway now so uh, yeah so um, i was yeah i was saying that there are theories there are two competing theories but the community the community hasn't agreed upon uh, what exactly is happening so there is this heating due to dissipation of waves so you know there are these uh, waves which like you if you stand on the beach on a nice day and you see waves uh, approaching the shore and as they approach the shore they break right the waves dissipate away they, you don't see the waves anymore they crash so one of the theories is that these crashing waves in the sun they dissipate and they convert their energy to heat now the second competing theory is something uh, which only happens for magnetic fields so you know that uh, sun and other stars they possess a very strong magnetic field and these magnetic field are not like you know dipole of your uh, normal bar magnet in the laboratory they are much more complicated so they have lot of twists and braids and lot of these uh, turbulent features in them because of which the magnetic field lines they do what is known as a reconnection so because of this reconnection there's a lot of heat generated like you know like that happens in your electrical circuits for example the i square r losses so uh, in layman's term these are like i square r losses and these also give rise to heat so there is no consensus yet in the community now uh, about which mechanism dominates in which part of the sun so that is one of the grand challenge problems in solar physics of course there are more but right now i can think of two to which can be explained in a simple manner thank you thank you piyali so so i think we heard a lot quite a bit about piyali and wagish about the fact that the sun is still a study a object of study we still do not understand everything about the sun and therefore there are solar astronomers studying every aspect of the sun using ground based telescopes and the upcoming space mission called aditya as well as simulations and theoretical studies and observations and so on. so still it's still a very very uh, uh, active field of study and we hope that some of you here today will become solar astronomers because of today's uh, eclipse so uh, there's one question i wanted to take before that there are many more comments about uh, eating and drinking during the eclipse so we would like to repeat yes you can eat during the eclipse you can drink during the eclipse it's absolutely no harm cause yeah, it's basically a, a eclipse basically a play of shadows the moon is coming between us and the sun you know it could well have been your hand it could have been a building it could have been anything else it's no different from a, from you hiding behind the shadow of a building during a uh, you know hot uh, afternoon and therefore eclipses have no harmful effects on us at all the sun and the moon doesn't really care much for our lives really and the only only thing we have to worry about is do not look at the sun directly with your naked eyes or through a telescope or a pair of binoculars or anything at all you will damage your eyes so please do not do that there was one question which said how did our ancestors know how to predict eclipses that's an excellent question so uh, eclipses have always been things which which scared people right if you not know how an eclipse is caused uh, the sun disappearing suddenly or the moon disappearing suddenly can be very very scary and therefore every culture was scared of it and had myths and had stories to explain it right so most cultures had some kind of a demon or an animal eating Uh, the sun or the moon during an eclipse, and then you had to you had to force it to go away by beating drums or shouting or or, or doing some rituals and so on. But then long, long back, uh, uh, 
around 3000 years ago people in especially in mesopotamia noticed that there were some patterns to when the eclipse were caused the cultures were which were very very scared of eclipses which were basically the babylonians or the chinese maintain meticulous records of eclipses because they were scared of it right and they started noticing some patterns in the sense that they said okay if i have an eclipse and the other eclipse of some some type then they would repeat after 18 years and so on and so forth right so these are called the saros cycles and so purely arithmetically people found out various patterns of repetition in the uh, in the eclipse uh, uh, when the eclipse occurs right and they used this to predict eclipses for a long time and these were kind of reasonably accurate for for a few hundred years right but then by the time you know third fourth century uh, uh, you know uh, ce rolled over including you know aryabhata in india and of course in in china and babylonia and egypt and so on people had started observing the motion of the sun the moon the planets a bit more carefully they started measuring their positions and they started trying to predict their motions as well right this was basically as a like a phenomenological model right so you fit circles you fit epicycles and so on you fit you fit certain parameters and then you try and predict them the where they would be the next month or next week and if they differed from where you thought they would be you then refine your method methodology refine your tables and so on to make it more and more accurate uh you know and in india of course we had a wonderful tradition of this from aryabhata to aramira to baskara to lalla and and so on right up to the kerala school of mathematics in the 1800s which include nilakantha somayaji who came up with what we now know as the tycho brahe model a few decades before tycho brahe did in your right but then but then if you ask any of the astronomers in india china egypt anywhere how did this happen why are they moving the way they did we did not know that right that had to wait till we had a dynamical theory which came from newton right so once newton came up with this gravitational theory as well as the laws of motion we could then understand why planets and the sun and the moon and the earth move the way they do and then you could predict eclipses which much more accurate which is what we did so in some sense these are three stages of prediction historically speaking first we look at patterns like 3000 years ago and with patterns of eclipse occurrence you predict where it should occur next then you started fitting formulae to the motion of the sun the moon and the planets and then use that to predict where what happens later and then after newton and halley and so on we had dynamical theories where you could you could put in more and more details and uh, perturbations and predict things more and more accurately so i hope that answers the question uh if you look at the feed from halley you can now see it's almost maximum eclipse it's half of half the sun is covered the little bit of dark things at the bottom in the halley feed are the is the mountain below which is going to sink very soon and in lay though there are clouds you can still see the eclipse on very very beautifully Uh, so hello everybody uh, i'd like to welcome another uh, famous astronomer uh, professor siraj hasan who is the ex director of iia and he is a very very well known solar astronomer from across the world uh, and uh, he's been a part of the solar astronomy journey of iia since the very beginning and i would ask you to just say hello and, and tell us a little bit about what the kind of things which interest him and excite him about the sun and about this eclipse in particular well first of all greetings to everybody I was just telling uh, the director that uh, I've been to about uh, I've uh, witnessed at least six I've been to six eclipse expeditions and all six have been successful. So that's been really a, a big bonus. Uh, as far as uh, my interest in the sun is concerned, it's been uh, looking at uh, trying to understand what happens, what magnetic fields do in the solar atmosphere, and so we've. Uh, in most of the eclipse expeditions we've tried to look for waves as uh, signature waves in the solar atmosphere and uh, i must say that uh, the papers that have come out of these uh, expeditions are have, have convinced i think um, the, the community that uh, such waves do indeed exist we were looking at uh, short wave 
uh, you know, several seconds to up to a minute or so. And I think, well, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, the Hyundai, Hyundai Sunday City. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. Well, I, I'm not going to go on to, uh, too long. Let I'll give it back to Nero. To I mean, I'm going to say something about one more solar uh, experiment we haven't talked about yet, mm. which is to build a really large solar telescope in India, which you have been a really uh, integral part of, the, Nash, the NLSC. Well, yes, the National Large Solar uh, Program. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Nero, I'm closing. Oh. Yes. So, uh, close the okay, so this is a message from Hanley saying uh, that the sun is set for them. Uh, okay. So let's all thank people in Hanley. Crispin, do you want to turn your video on? Yeah, so there's Crispin and his colleagues uh, at Hanley. The sun has set in Hanley now. Uh, can you bring everybody in? We'd like to see all of you and, uh, and say hello. Everybody in Hanley. Hanley, to remind you all, is our, a site of our observatory in Ladakh, which is 4,500 meters high. We have now in the camera people from IAA as well as uh, whom we call the Hanley Dark Sky Reserve Ambassadors. These are young people from the nearby villages who are going to become the astrotourism guides for the upcoming Hanley Dark Sky Reserve. And they're very, very happy that they're able to join us here. So, hello everybody. Uh, thanks a lot for your feed from Hanley. We will continue with the lay feed now, but on behalf of everybody watching us from around the world, we'd like to thank everybody at Hanley for the delightful live stream of the Eclipse you've been giving us so far. Now we'll cut back to Sira Jasin and, and we just let him conclude and about uh, the uh, NLSC. Okay, yes. So as I was saying, the project started about uh, more than a decade ago. Um, and um, we were able to identify a superb site at in, on the shores of Pangong Lake in Mira. And uh, uh, the project has now reached a very mature stage. It is now with the Department of Science and Technology. And we are hopeful that, uh, you know, soon, soon means in about less than a year or so, this project will get the final go ahead. And as far as the team is concerned, they are absolutely ready. All the design and everything has been worked out, the experiments, the scientific uh, team, everything is now in place. And I think it's just waiting for the final go ahead. Okay, Neeraj, back to you. Okay, thanks, thanks. Thank you, Thank you, everybody. Thanks for dropping in. And uh, I think he's on his way upstairs to look at the eclipse, exactly. by, uh, through the eclipse glasses himself. <laughs> Uh, because in Bangalore, uh, fortunately, the sky actually is clear, which is quite a rare occurrence. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, I'll ask Banya to take a couple more questions from YouTube chat. So, yes, please. Uh, play, put your questions in the YouTube uh, chat box and we can take them. Uh, so, one thing I can tell you about the eclipse is the, in general, uh, how eclipse move on the Earth. Remember, Earth rotate from west to east at a speed of 28 km per hour at the equator. And the moon is also orbiting the Earth from west to east about second. Second. Per minute, I'm sorry. 28 kilometers per minute. And moon also and moon is also orbiting Earth west to east about 61 kilometers per minute. Okay. So during eclipse, moon's shadow also moves from east to west with a speed which is difference between these two, that is 68 minus 28, which is 33 km per minute across the Earth's map, right? So that is roughly how these shadow of the moon moves on the surface of, a, surface of the Earth. And that shadow is basically called the track of the eclipse. And in most favorable circumstances, when the total solar eclipse occurs, the track can be up to 267 km um, wide. And the totality can last as long as seven minutes, right? So that happens in a very, very rare circumstances. 
and the partial eclipse can be seen from a large area on the Earth's surface, as large as 6,400 kilometer wide, and so on. so. On. Uh, the typically the totality, the band of the totality could be 100 to 160 kilometers um, when there is a, a total solar eclipse. And the shadow can sweep an area of Earth's surface about 16,000 kilometers, right? So if there is an eclipse, it, as I said, the shadow moves to different parts of the Earth. And from start to end, it could be as uh, long as 16,000 kilometers. And total solar eclipses are rare events, although they occur somewhere on Earth every 18 months on average. It's estimated that they reoccur at a given place only once every 360 to 410 years on an average. So that's like if you are seeing a total solar eclipse at one place, that's only going to be a one lifetime event. And again, I want to reiterate that these eclipses are basically the geometrical effect and there is nothing supernatural or divine about it. And whatever damage or harm people talk about, that's harm. Huh. So, uh, well, you can see from Leh Ladakh, already um, a very small part of the sun is now seen. Partly it is blocked by moon and partly by the foreground mountains. So this is again a very, uh, very rare picture that you would see for next couple of minutes or maybe less because you can see it is shrinking very fast and in a minute or so the sun would set in lay. So these are the last couple of seconds that would be uh, visible um, before the sun sets and this spectacle uh, uh, come to close. Yes, the last part. So uh, we can see that there's only very small portion, which is almost now gone now. So that is that concludes the uh, eclipse from the Ladakh. From the Le Ladakh. And uh, we are trying to get the feed from Bangalore because sun is yet to set and we already had some eclipse going on here, right? Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. So the, the eclipse started in Bangalore only a few minutes ago. We're trying to get a feed from upstairs, literally. But as you can see, the eclipse is, once the eclipse sets from north, it, it keeps the, the shadow keeps traveling downwards and southwards. Yes. So while we're getting it, getting the Bangalore link, uh, you please continue posting questions and we will try and answer them while we are waiting. Okay. So how do you visit Lay and Han Lay is a question. Uh, you'll have to write to us, go on our website, and you can you can fill up a form for that. Why should we not eat during the eclipse? You can. Uh, Shyam is asking, can I watch the eclipse with bare eyes? Please do not do so. It's not uh, safe for your eyes to look at the sun directly. You have to use eclipse glasses or any projection method. Hmm. So there is a question on gravitational lensing during eclipse. So remember uh, Einstein's theory of general theory of relativity, which predicts that if there is a heavy massive object in the foreground of a star, then that object is going to bend the starlight. Now that was the theory. And in order to prove that, to give an experimental proof for that theory, Arthur Dinton in 1990 uh, eclipse expedition um, planned an experiment to test the theory. So, that happened to be the total solar eclipse day in 1919. And when the, when, when, when the total solar eclipse happened, they took several images of the sky and with the background stars. And uh, when you take the same images of the same part of the sky six months later, you would see that position of the stars in these two images was different. So there was a slight shift in the position of the stars. 
And that shift was attributed to the gravitational bending which the sun caused to the background star or the light coming from the background stars. So this is how the uh, lensing happens uh, when you have a massive object in the foreground and the light is coming from a source which is in the background. It's in me. So I'm also looking at the questions and I would respond if there is any question. Uh, so there's a question whether Earth is the only planet which can uh, experience the solar eclipse. That's not quite correct. Remember, eclipse is happening when something is coming in between the Earth and the Sun. Now that can be true for any planet. So if there is some other object which comes in between the other planet and the sun that would cause the eclipse at that planet, right? So some of the moons of Jupiter as well as Saturn and maybe also of the Mars can have the similar configurations which may cause the eclipse of, or solar eclipse for those planets. So it's not the phenomena which is only observed on Earth, but it could be widely observed on outer planets, planets which are uh, outside the orbit of Earth. Okay. Yeah, if you have any more question, you please feel free to post it on the chat box in YouTube while we are trying to get you feed from Bangalore. Uh, the eclipse has already started here. Sun has not sun. Our both feeds that were really very successful from IIA as well as uh, Henle, uh, we have seen the spectacular uh, eclipse happening there. And right now the sun has already set. So the feed from those two places is, has stopped. And we will try to have it from here, uh, from Bangalore in a short while, if we are able to do that. What happens if Earth stood motionless and Sun and Moon rotate about it? Hmm. No, that, that's a hypothetical question. Uh, sun is the massive body and if you look at um, any other objects in our universe, it's always the lighter bodies which go around the massive bodies. And by the way, uh, nothing can stand still in the universe or in the space, they are always moving. Even the sun and our solar system is going around the galaxy. So it's also, even though we say sun is at the center of solar system, but it's not stationary. In absolute space, it is not stationary. It's still going around the, um, uh, around the uh, Milky Way. So, some more questions. Huh, the length of the solar eclipse, the world record. So as I said already, the, uh, under best circumstances, the total solar eclipse could last as long as seven minutes, six and a half to seven minutes. And that's also roughly the record. Uh, there's a question that Saturn has 83 moons and can we see 83 eclipses on the Saturn? So remember, eclipses can vary depending on what is the size of the moon and how far it is from the planet, right? So if the moon is really small and it is far away, then you might see it transiting in front of the sun, but not really causing any uh, uh, the shadow on the planet. So again, the occurrence of the eclipse would also depend on in what plane these planets are revolving or the moon revolving around the planets compared to the orbit of the planet around the sun, right? And everything is not in the same plane. The moon's orbit around the planets can have a tilt with respect to the or orbit of the planet with respect to the planet around the sun. Yeah, 
so there are few questions uh, which are on the same topics. So I'll just club them together. While you're waiting, so we're getting a, a feed from the terrace of our institution in Bangalore. So please stay back. You can see now. You can see it. Thanks, uh, Prasanna, for getting that done. Uh, in Bangalore, the eclipse started only 10 minutes ago, and the maximum coverage of the sun in Bangalore would only be around 11 percent. And uh, and somebody is asked why is it seen in Bangalore much after Ladakh, and that's a good question because as the moon and the earth go around the sun, the shadow of the moon travels across the earth's surface and it's traveling in the direction from north to south, right? So it started in Russia first, then Kazakhstan and Central Asia and then it crossed Ladakh and then it's now crossing Bangalore and South India, which is why you're seeing, you're seeing a time gradient in the, in, in the way that this is traveling. And in some of the eclipses, you would see that the direction of the of the shadow of the moon on the Earth so will be different and therefore the order in which you would see the eclipse from various parts of the parts of the globe would also be different. Uh, the, the other question about uh, Saturn's, did we talk about this amazing coincidence we have of this 400, the coincidence of 400? Uh, maybe you can tell a little bit about that. Okay. Yes. So right, people ask what, we, we, have a, we have a total solar eclipse occurring every now and then on, on the Earth, right? Now the question is, the moon covers the sun's disk exactly during a total solar eclipse. And you can ask why, right? It, it ends up being a very interesting coincidence that the moon is able to cover the sun's disk exactly now. The reason is because the sun is around 400 times as big as the moon, right? But the sun is also, sun is not only 400 times bigger than the moon, it's also 400 times farther th than the moon is from us, right? Because of that, the sun and the moon end up uh, having the same angular size in the sky, which is why the moon can exactly hide the sun up. Now, this is merely a coincidence, and you can ask, this is a really strange coincidence to happen, you know, is it natural and so on? It is, because the moon is moving away from the earth slowly, right? And therefore, the moon was much closer to us before, in which case it would, it would have covered the sun much, much more, much easier. But as the moon is moving away from the earth, in after like a billion years or so, the moon will become much smaller than the sun as seen on the sky and then you no longer have total solar eclipses. So we can only enjoy total solar eclipses on earth for another few hundred million years, which is therefore we are lucky <laughs> that we can, right? It's, it's, a, it's, in some sense, it's, it's a coincidence, uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a happy coincidence, basically. There's another question saying, can the earth block sunlight and cause the eclipse on Mars? Uh, in principle, Maybe, but then the Earth's, Earth's size is so small compared to the Sun's disk from Mars, like Banya just said, that you would not be able to see it visually that easily. But then Ravinda Banyal here is also an expert on what we call extrasolar planets, right? Which are planets which we have discovered now to revolve around distant stars, nearby stars. And when you say and, and when you say eclipses, there is a very interesting and important connection between eclipses and discovering planets around other stars. So maybe you want to say something about that? Yes. So, as you see, we are watching the eclipse when moon is coming between the sun and the earth. Now, when we extend this idea to the stars outside our solar system, and of course, all those stars have planets around them, and now we know for sure that each star on an average has one or more than one, one planet. Now, when, as an observer, when we look at these stars, some of the stars and planets will have a right configuration close to the edge that, as an observer, you will observe that a planet would cross the disk of the star. Well, you don't resolve planet and stars because they are so far away, the telescope cannot resolve. But by virtue of the fact that they planet passes in front of the stars, it would block certain light of the stars. And now we have instruments, photometers, which are sensitive enough to record that redu reduction in the intensity. And this is how one of the method to detect exoplanet works, the transit method. Transit method is nothing but the eclipse caused by the planets, planets around the other stars, which then is the reduction in intensity is recorded by the instrument that are on Earth or space-based instruments. 
and that's how we usually confirm the or validate the presence of planet around other stars there are other methods also to detect planet around other stars but the transit method has been the most successful methods where almost more than 70% of the total planet as of today are detected by transit method remember today the confirmed discoveries are close to 5200 and more than 6000 3500 are detected by transit methods and thank you today, thank you now uh, banyal has been sitting here with us since 4 o'clock explaining the eclipse to all of us but i think it's time he went upstairs to see the eclipse for himself so uh, i'm going to relieve banyal now quickly run out see the eclipse yourself have on come back yes in the meantime i am going to ask uh, ramya and aratrika to join us the couple of questions which i think you may, you would like to answer one is that if you compare the age of the sun to that of the human age what is the current age of the sun and how long does it take to become a white giant i mean i think they mean red giant right so basically you know the sun's evolution how old is the sun what will happen to it uh piyali ramya anybody wants to take the question so uh yeah i will i will answer uh, in part part of this question so uh just like uh, uh, uh there is a birth and death of human beings so the stars also are born and and they die and fade off but the time scale is quite large we are talking about few billions of years time scale over here so uh now the current <clears throat> the current uh, um age of the sun is about 4 4 billion years it's already 4 billion years old and it is what we call uh, is in the main sequence stage so what do we understand by main sequence we, uh, this means that the core at the core of the uh, uh, sun there is hydrogen fusion reaction going on which means hydrogen is uh, uh, fusing to form uh, helium so that is uh, uh, the uh, reaction which is currently happening and uh, um, that is uh, the main sequence phase where the sun is going to spend most of its lifetime in the main sequence so th- then uh, once the core is completely converted into helium from hydrogen so the sun will move on to uh, slowly become the red giant where it will expand and uh, this will take another few uh, billions of years and uh, when once the uh, sun attains the red giant phase uh, i i think that is when uh, it will also engulf earth and other planets in the solar system uh, after this stage in a few billion years uh, we will end up or the sun, the st- the, st- uh, the sun will end up as a white dwarf uh, it will shrink in size and um, uh, yeah the fusion reactions at the core will uh, uh kindly see so that's the phase when compared to human life which is only few uh, 80 to 100 years old on an average uh, the sun will live on for about uh, 8 to 10 billion years Uh, Ramya, you are muted. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Ramya. Uh, uh, Piyali, would you like to add something to that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Ramya has uh, pretty much uh, said everything. So I think the uh, sun will sun is basically in its middle age now. So maybe uh, you know if if the human lifespan is of the order of eighty years, the sun is probably forty five to fifty years old right now, which is what she said. So the sun will continue to shine this way for you know another four billion years before the catastrophic strike strikes. It becomes a red giant and then. um the the sun the sun the, the solar mass is not sufficient enough to form a neutron star or a black hole so the 
the end stage of the son's life would be spent as a white dwarf basically so uh, the son is not going to end up as a supernova but you know something much less spectacular than that and after that uh, nova is uh, you know is uh, formed the outer layers of the sun are shed the sun will end up as a small white dwarf whose size is actually going to be much much smaller than that of the earth so the earth size is around 12000 kilometers so the size of a white dwarf comparatively would be around 200 kilometers so that is how the uh, sun is going to end its life but before it does as ramya pointed out uh, the sun is going to bulge up so much that it is going to uh, the 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 size of the sun is going to be similar to the orbit of the mars and afterwards it uh, it will shed its outer layers and end up as a very small white dwarf so that is what i wanted to add thank you thank you Mirage. thanks Diyale. yeah uh, there's a question uh, does eclipse have any effect on satellite communication it's a good question not really because the shadow of the moon is falling on the earth right if the shadow of the moon was falling on the satellite then of course the solar panels would not be able to generate energy for that so that would be the only uh, only effect but there's another very interesting effect uh, on the earth because solar eclipses uh, in the, in our modern times when we when we focusing on green energy right so in many countries a large fraction of the energy comes from solar panels and uh, if, if a solar eclipse happens in the middle of the day, for example, like it happened a couple of years ago, uh, there will be a sudden decrease of energy flowing into the national grid from the solar panels. And therefore, they have to take special uh, uh, care to make sure that uh, that doesn't have any adverse effect, doesn't trip, trip the entire grid or something. right? So they have to slowly reduce the power from the solar grid into the national grid and then raise it again after the eclipse. So it's kind of an interesting effect. It, uh, so, like, just have on our modern life uh, in the in the context of green energies. There's another there's a question about why can't Mercury or Venus have an eclipse on Earth? As so we answered that earlier, but let's handle that again. Aratrika, would you like to handle that? Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, the thing is that uh, both Venus and Mercury, those are pretty small planets, and uh, both are quite far away from us as compared to the moon and earth's uh, relative size and distance so the, what the, the the thing is they do form shadows on earth but they, they are almost negligible they cannot really be observed by us so those are mostly called transits not eclipses in, in in that sense yeah i hope yeah thanks a lot Arathika. yeah so we do have mercury and venus transits there won't be any of them soon we had a couple of Venus transits last decade and, and so and also a couple of Mercury transits. Uh, nowadays we observe transits because they look beautiful. Like the eclipse looks beautiful, so does the transit, of course. But the transits have, have a historical importance. It was by measuring the time of the Venus transit from different parts of the Earth that we first knew how to uh, we knew how to calculate the actual distance between objects in the solar system. So till then, we only knew the relative distances. We knew that, for example, if the distance between Earth and the Sun was 1, then Earth and Venus and so-and-so, Jupiter and uh, Sun and so-and-so and so on. Everything was relative to a given distance. But to calculate the absolute distance between objects in the solar system, uh, Venus transit was what was used in the 1800s uh, to calculate them accurately. Now, of course, there are much, much more accurate ways of, of, of doing so. Uh, what is the effect of radiation skimming across the moon falling on the earth? Not really. The, the radiation skimming across the moon falling on earth is almost negligible. It would be because of gravitational lensing and that's extremely small because the moon's mass is very, very small. Anyway, it would still be far less than without an eclipse, right? So there is no effect, there's no harmful effect of the eclipse on us. There's no extra radiation coming from the solar eclipse which will affect us. Uh, you can eat, you can drink, you can go out, you can do whatever you want to, and so on. Uh, it's an interesting question about the impact of the eclipse on the waves in the ocean. That's an interesting question. Uh, of course, you know, we know that waves are, I, I suppose you mean tides, so I'm going to assume you mean tides, right? Uh, tides on the, on, on our, in the ocean are caused by the moon's gravity as well as sun's gravity. 
and we know that the moon plays a much more significant role in affecting the tides in our oceans compared to the sun. And of course, but then of course, when the sun and the moon are roughly the same direction, the tides add up and you get stronger tides. And that is true for every uh, new moon, for example, right? During a full moon, you get less tides because they're in opposite directions. So the tides between during a new moon and during an actual solar eclipse aren't that different because the moon is almost the same direction as the sun within two degrees or so. So there will not be much noticeable effect on tides because of the eclipse or and above what happens during a new moon. Any. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the eclipse is ongoing in Bangalore, and that is because we're far south, and the, and the shadow of the moon is moving southwards from Russia down to South India, and therefore, as time went by, we started with the eclipse in Russia, then Kazakhstan, Central Asia, Ladakh, Central India, and now, and, 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 and sun is set in Ladakh now, and now we are seeing the eclipse from Bangalore, in fact, we're seeing it from the terrace. There are, there are Prasanna and, and other colleagues of his are upstairs giving, sending us the live stream of the eclipse, which is being laid from by Swastik, uh, who's here. I request Swastik to come here and say hello, because he's been doing a lot of work, and, and I think people should say, see him and say hello. Uh, that's, Swastik is a student here. He's doing his PhD in IAA, and uh, that's it. And so uh, he and Amit have been behind the computer uh, since 4 o'clock, and it's because of them we'll be getting the live stream from across the world. So thanks. Yeah, hi everyone and here are meeting. I'm still alive. <laughs> yes. So as you can see, the, the sun sets in Bangalore at 5.55, but it will set probably a few minutes before that here because we have some trees and buildings in the horizon. It's 5.40 now. So we will continue this till sunset in Bangalore and then we'll stop this transmission. We still have quite a few of people with us now. Thanks for staying so long. Uh, I will... and. And Randeep Singh says hello, Swastika. I don't know if you know him. Okay. Yeah, hi. From my end. Yeah. So somebody is asked whether shadow of the moon falling on the surface of the sun is called a solar eclipse. No. The light falling on the moon is because of the sun. And therefore, the shadow of the moon will always be behind the moon as seen from the sun. And therefore, it cannot fall on the sun. It's like saying shadow of, of me because the sun can fall on the sun. It can only fall below me. Right? So that's, that's how it is. So there are some questions about how come ancient Indians were able to predict eclipses without telescopes and so on. That's a very good question. Uh, so astronomers from across the world in many cultures were able to predict eclipses very accurately uh, much before telescopes were invented. Uh, and these were because they had good models for the motion of celestial objects around the in, in the sky. So Indian astronomers starting from Aryabhata up to the Kerala School of Mathematics and even later, uh, if, you look, if, you, if you look at Patani Samatha Chandrasekhara in Orissa, uh, have had uh, perfected or had up continuously updated the methods of calculating the paths of the moon and the sun in the sky and therefore the eclipses for many centuries. Similarly, it was also done, for example, in, in Europe, in China, in Mesopotamia, long back, in Egypt and so on and so forth, in Greeks and all that. So the, the, the model they used was that they would they would model the objects going around the around the Earth in a circle, but that was not quite accurate because the Earth is the one which is going around the Sun. Therefore, they had to modify these circles with what we call epicycles, and then they would look at the predictions of where the planets or the Sun or Moon should be, let's say next month, with uh, with what it actually what actually happened, and they would then notice there are some errors. They would then modify the epicyclic models and so on. So they kept modifying these models across many centuries, across various cultures, including India. So that it agreed better and better with the observations. But of course, once we realized globally that it was the sun that the center of the solar system and not the earth, then we threw away the epicyclic model and came to the heliocentric model, where of course the calculations became much, much easier. And now, because we can we use dynamical equations uh, from Newton's time, we can, we can add in the effect of very small perturbations, for example, the effect of the of Jupiter on Earth's orbit, or effect of Saturn on Earth's orbit, and so on. And therefore, we can we can refine our predictions even more, and predict eclipses much more accurately uh, than we could before. But there's very one, one very interesting application of ancient Indian uh, eclipse observations, which is uh, pioneered in Bangalore actually by Dr. B. S. Shailaja, who is the director of the Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium in Bangalore, and a student Geeta Kaidala. They looked at uh, stone inscriptions across Karnataka and Andhra 
uh, dating 2000 years ago so last 1000 years in old kannada and some of them would be recording you know gifts by the kings and so on during an eclipse right and they would then mention okay this village is eclipse was seen at this time and this is when the king gave so much money to the temple and so on and this kind of thing is found in other parts of the world as well so what people do including you know, dr shailaja and the student in bangalore is that you we know when the eclipse should have occurred and where it should have occurred let's say 800 years ago you compare that with the records and then you can check if there's any error and any error can then be possibly attributed to perturbations in the moon's orbit itself these are called delta t studies and is very important right so if you have eclipse records in stones or parchment or whatever dating back 1000 years 1500 years you can use that to to have constraints on how much the moon's orbit has changed by very little bit and this is something which's been done in india as well increasingly along with other other records in other parts of the world uh are there going to be an impact of climate change on the eclipse no not really if you know except that you know our atmosphere might get very very hazy and murky and we will not be see see anything but that that's no that's no effect of climate change i'm just holding the fort till people come back from upstairs after they see the eclipse so i'll just keep answering questions till sunset are there any electric and magnetic field effects of the eclipse on earth no no there is not really not on the earth surface uh impact of eclipse on astrophysics in india oh there's plenty there's plenty so eclipses are as you're seeing beautiful events right like absolutely marvelous events and there's something which excites everybody right so a lot of people i know got interested in science or astronomy because they saw an eclipse safely at some point right but astrophysics development in india itself was influenced very very deeply by eclipses the total solar eclipse on 18th august 1868 passed through andhra pradesh Okay, and in, and in Machli part, and then and then this just when spectroscopy had had been invented, right? So Pierre Janssen had set up a, a camp in uh, in Gunto in Andhra, and Norman Watson, who was the director of the Madras Observatory, had set up a, a camp in Machli part of Andhra to see the eclipse and in particular look at the spectrum of the corona and the chromosphere at totality, and he ended up discovering the element helium. Uh, during sectors in india so that's a very important you know uh, uh, indian connection to solar eclipses right do eclipses help the planet in any way or useful no they're not useful but they are beautiful and i think a lot of things can be beautiful and not really useful and and and, and that's right. part of why things are beautiful right uh, yeah so you can so somebody asked about varaha mira and so on so aryabhata had actually mentioned very clearly that eclipses are caused due to the shadows of the sun and of the earth and the moon falling on each other okay and he told you how to predict them varaha mira and bhaskara did not agree with them a little bit they varaha mira and bhaskara invoked rahu and ketu aryabhata did not much later lallacharya who was one of the famous indian astronomer said the same thing he said look eclipses are not caused because of of you know demons and so on that is a story but it is a cost only because of shadows of the earth and moon falling on each other and lot of people in that age made fun of lalla lalla was a very famous astronomer who lived i think 800 years ago in gujarat in present day gujarat and people made fun of him but he said no no i i know i i i can observe uh, eclipses i i can understand how they cause and he he insisted that the stories you have about eclipses are stories but we understand the signs behind them and it is because of ecl- because of shadows and therefore they're perfectly harmless right so you know so i would rather follow aryabhata and lalla personally so uh, ravindra banyal is back here do you want to tell us how the eclipse was of this you can turn the video on okay and tell us what is up yeah so i had just uh, gone out and saw the last part of the eclipse from bangalore and it it was spectacular we had like several students there and some uh, visitors as well so i would also urge people who are uh, living in the southern state and if they have a clear sky they could probably step out and have the last glimpses of this eclipse because the next one is going to happen maybe two years down the line um, so this would be the last and the right opportunity to take the final glimpses of this year's eclipse that is visible from india uh, right now only from southern state i'm sure most of the northern state the sun has 
set probably already, already set yeah and it's setting in bangalore as well it's uh, i think it's set in bangalore the sun looked weird because part of it is covered by the buildings and the moon yes ah there you can see the sun being swallowed up by some apartment complex <laughs> while it's also being swallowed up by the moon from the other side yeah. can you imagine now so, <laughs> so we'll wait till the sun sets in bangalore and then we'll stop this uh, live feed this is the last view of the eclipse sun from bangalore currently it's already set in north india so there's a question and in bangalore the maximum is around 11% so 11% of the sun's disk is covered by the moon there we see the last remnants of the sun and i also want to introduce you to amit who's been behind the computer along with swastik bringing us a live stream from three different places in india and and two uh, abroad so that's amit say hello hey guys nice to be here and be a part of all this so now we see that the sun is set yeah. if you are the apartment complex there you will still see the circles but then they are hiding it from us So last words, Banya. Yeah. So I just want to say that uh, these solar eclipses, they are natural phenomena, and they are not harmful. Ne- neither they are any way auspicious. They are beautiful, as uh, Neeraj has said, and we should we should not deprive ourselves from these wonderful uh, spectacles that happens once in a while in the cosmos. so please uh, go out and enjoy and encourage others also to uh, take part in these things for well, sky the sky is beautiful in the daytime and at yeah. night time so you know go go look up a uh, yes. concrete what netflix <laughs> document this name was uh, you know at night go look at the sky if you are in a big city of course you can't see many stars but if you are in a small town then you have the entire sky for you the beautiful yes. milky way the planets which move every day go to the nearest planetarium or science center find out more about astronomy they will have telescopes there to show you stuff at night time go online look up look up the lovely videos explaining basic astronomy on youtube uh, yeah. there'll be amateur astronomy clubs in almost every town and city in india so find out the nearest amateur astronomy club join them and before we say bye piyali and anatrika would you like to say anything Uh, yeah so uh, i could also catch a glimpse of the uh, eclipse while on this uh, nh48 uh, but i could not watch it at the maximum thing because it is already now below the horizon but while it lasted it was really wonderful and the sky was totally clear here yeah thanks dear thanks for joining us from nh44 aratrika any last words Yeah, I would like like to see the results of the eclipse sitting hashtag that we that we voted. Yeah, after this, <laughs> check that out. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. So I will also like to thank a whole bunch of IA staff who have been with us preparing for this live stream for many weeks now, from Leh and Hanley, Ladakh to Kodaikanal to Bangalore to you know to everywhere, and as well as all the students who have been preparing these wonderful videos about eclipses in twelve different Indian languages. created posters and and helped us have this wonderful awareness campaign uh, which has brought all of you here uh, for the last two and a half hours so thanks again everybody for staying with us on youtube uh, and we'll meet you at the next celestial event uh, so so meanwhile look up at the skies look at the stars and have fun with the sky goodbye